Hi, this is Dr. Yoon, and we are going to do some lessons on factoring today. So this is factoring lesson four. We are factoring three terms, trinomial. And at this university, they require us to teach AC methods. You may have learned other things in, at high school or other places. And if you are pretty sure what you're doing, that would be OK. But here, we are teaching you AC method. And the whole reason we use AC method is that when you have AX squared plus BX plus C, um, it's a three terms, but we can try to change it to a four terms, which doesn't change any of the values of the questions. And after you have four terms, you can factor it by grouping in pairs. And it seems like most of our students are pretty good with factoring by pairs. So that's the whole reason why we do it. And the other thing is when you use AC method, it always works. Uh, if you have really big numbers, it will work perfectly. So here are the steps for AC method. First, we need to make sure your expression or your equation is in order. In AX squared plus BX plus C, this order. And after that, we need to find two numbers so we can break the middle guy into two terms. Uh, these two numbers need to be, when you multiply them together, the products need to be A times C. And when you add the two numbers together, the sum of the two numbers need to equal to b. So after you get the two numbers, we will go back to our original questions and break the bx into two terms using that two numbers you just found. So by then, you will change a three terms question to a four terms question. And you can factor a four terms question by grouping them in pairs. So this is the first example. We are factoring of three terms using AC methods. Uh, we look at this, and it's already in the AX squared plus BX plus C form. So we can go ahead and try to decide what is A, B, and C. So A is the coefficient with the X squared. So we, ch we have 14 for A. And then for B, we have negative 19. So don't forget the negative sign. And for C, we have negative 3. Again, it comes with a negative. Uh, remember that we need to find two numbers that will multiply with the products equal to AC, and the sum will equal to B. So first of all, we need to find what is A times C. A times C is 14 times negative 3, which is a negative 42, right? And the B would be negative 19. So at this point, we need to find all the combination of numbers that will multiply to 42. So we can have 1 times 42, uh, 2 times 21. And if you're not sure, you can pull your calculator, divide by 1, by 2, by 3, etc. I'm just going in order. So it's also 3 times 14. And 4, we're not going into that. And then 6 times 7. And 7 times 6. So when it's repeating, you know you have all the combination. Uh, so now looking at all these combinations, we want to find one that will somehow give us 19. So probably not the first one. If you add or subtract them, it's not going to be 19. Uh, second one looks OK, so I'm going to try to put those numbers in and see if somehow I can get a 19. So if I put 2 and 21, 2 and 21. So I need to get a negative 19, so I will play with the sign, and it seems like if I have a negative 21 plus 2 will give me negative 19, and if I have negative 21 times a 2 will give me negative 42. So it has to work for both of these. So this combination seems to work. So my winning combination here is 2 and negative 21. So when we get these two numbers, we can go back to our original question and try to break the middle guy bx into two terms using those two numbers, which we have plus 2 and minus 21. And because the 19 come with the x, so we need to give them x2. 
And you can check negative 21x plus 2x would be negative 19x. So we are not changing the values, but we're changing this term into two terms. And after that, we need to bring down the first term, which is 14x squared. And we need to bring down the last term, which is minus 3. So going through this process, we change a three terms question into a four terms question without changing any of the values. So when we have four terms, we remember that we can factor by grouping them in pairs. So pairs, pairs. We do two at a time. So for the first two terms, looking at what they have in common, we found that both of them can be divided by two, and both of them have at least x to the first power. So that's the common term for the, for the first two. After we pull that out, we still have 7x plus a 1. And when we look at the last two terms, we can see that it starts with negative, so I'm going to pull out the negative, and don't forget to change the sign in the parentheses. And both of them can be divided by 3, so 3 is the GCF, and 21 divided by 3 is going to be 7. So we have 7x for the first term inside. And after you pull a 3, you still have a 1 here. So again, for the four terms, you should have this matching part here. If you don't, you did something wrong. So we see 7x plus 1 is the common factor. We pull it out, put it in front. After we do that, the first term still have 2x, and the second term has negative 3. So that would be your answer. And again, if you FOIL it back, you should get back to the question, and that's how you can check your answer. So another question students sometimes ask is, uh, when do you just do the factor, and when do you solve for x? So here is an example, hopefully it will help you with that question. Uh, when you are given an expression, an expression meaning you only have one side, and we will only ask you to simplify or factor this. Uh, look at number two, they ask you to factor 10x squared minus 23x plus 12. This is considered an, as an expression. You only have one side, so all you can do is factor, and you cannot solve for x. If you look at number three, they ask you to solve, and they come with an equal sign for that type of question because you are given an equation and they ask you to solve it so you can solve for x. So let's look at number two first. This comes with three terms. It looks like it's in ax squared plus bx plus c form, so we can apply the ac method. So we see a is 10 and c is 12. So A times C should be 120. And my B is going to be negative 23. So I'm going to list a long list of multiples. We we'll get to 120. So we can start with 1 is 1 times 120. We also have 2 times 60. And after that, we have 3 times 40, and also 5, 4, or 4 times 30, and 5 times 24, this is a really long list, and 6 times 20, and maybe 8 times 15, and we have 10 times 12, and 12 times 10. So it's repeating, so we know that's all. You can stop there. So looking at this list, I need to somehow get a 23. So I'm pretty sure the first one, if you add or subtract, it's not going to give me 23. Not the second one. This is like 43 or 37. No, not this one. OK, we're getting close. Uh, we need 23, so 24 and 5 is not going to work. This would be 14 or 26. No. Nope. This one may work. So we're looking at 8 and 15. I'm going to go ahead and put those two numbers there, and I'm going to play with the sign. 8 and 15. I need a negative 23. 
So if both of them are negative, so negative 8 plus a negative 15 will give me a negative 23. And I need to double check with the top part. If negative 8 times a negative 15 is going to give me positive 120. So these two numbers work for both of these. So my winning combination this time is negative 8 and negative 15. So after we get these two numbers, we're going back to our original questions. And we're going to break the middle term into these two number, which is minus 8 and minus 15. And because this comes with x, so it's going to be negative x minus 15x. So together, we still have negative 23x. We didn't change the values. And we're going to bring down the first term, which is 10x squared. Bring down the last term, which is plus 12. So we are changing a four term, a three terms question to a four terms question without changing the values. When we have four terms, we can factor by grouping them in pairs. So after they are in pairs, we do two at a time. The first two terms, they have 2x in common. So we pull out the GCF 2x. And after we pull out 2x, we still have 5x minus 4. And the second part, first we will pull down the negative because it starts with negative. We will pull out the negative. And when we pull out negative, don't forget to change the sign in between. So looking at that two number, this time we can pull out, both of them can be divided by 3. And after we pull out 3, we have 5x and 4 here. So again, when you do the factor by grouping, you should have this part matching. If you don't have that, you probably did something wrong and go back and check your work. So when you see this common term, pull it out, 5x minus 4. And then after that, you will still have, from the first term, you have 2x. From the second term, you have minus 3. So this is an expression. They ask you to factor. Your answer should be in factors form. And if you FOIL it back, you should get back to the question. So that's one for expression. Your answer should be factors. because they ask you to factor. You don't solve for x. The second one looks almost identical with the number 3 almost look like identical with number 2, except it said equal to 0. So this time you have an equation, and we just did all this work, so we should know after the AC method for factoring, we should get the factor 5x minus 4 and 2x minus 3 equal to 0, right? Because it look exactly the same. So when we have an equation and they ask you to solve, what you will do is when you have factor times a factor equal to 0, you set each factor equal to 0. So you have the first factor, you can set it equal to 0. 5x minus 4 equal to 0. And the second factor, set it equal to 0, so you have 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And you're going to solve for x by isolating the x. You add 4 for the first term to both sides. So you have 5x equal to 4. Solving for x, you need to get rid of the 5. This is multiplying, so the opposite would be divide. So you divide 5 to both sides. This will give you the answer, which is x equal to 4 fifths. So you have one answer here. And the second answer, again, you need to isolate the x. So you do the opposite of subtracting 3, which is adding 3 to both sides. This will give me 2x equal to 3. 
And again, you're solving for x, so the two got to go. Two times x, the opposite of times will be divide. So divide two to both sides, and you will find that x is going to equal to three. So for solving an equation with three terms, the trinomial starting with square, this is a quadratic, you factor with AC method, set each factor equal to zero, and then you can solve for x. So that's the difference between solving and just factoring.